life. Taking charge with successful businessman, world-renowned speaker, and best-selling author, Mark Janiszewski. This is the only podcast where we end the self-help hustle and heartache and arm our listeners with everything they need to access a remarkable power within, a power beyond measure. Mark J is the creator of the famous Master Key Experience, which publishes annually a success rate of over 98% happier, healthier, and more successful people. Mark co-created the Master Key Experience, combining science and spirituality with his wife, over 30 scientists, and the illuminated ones spanning 4,000 years. You'll quickly discover that there really are no common people. There is greatness within you, and this podcast will help you find and develop your greatness. The best news? It's in you already, and and so it's free. I welcome you to our host, Mark J, creator of the Master Key Experience. Hey, aloha, Mark J, coming to you from uh, beautiful Kauai, Hawaii. Another miserable day here in the winter in Hawaii. It's just so fantastic here, uh, living inside the dream. And of course, that's a lot of what um, taking charge, ending the self help hustle, uh, the podcast is all about. So we hope we'll, you'll get to our page at. Um, worldslaziestnetworker.com, and you can go to the podcast page. There's about 15 of them there. We'll be adding one a week, so we're live. We're good. So ending the self-help hustle and heartache, what's that all about? Well, everybody knows that um, uh, the self-help industry is a $12 billion, that's with a B, a $12 billion industry in the United States with zero, zero, zero quantifiable results. Some really nice anecdotal stories about some woman that was living under a box and now she's an executive. But the thousands of people that buy these books and take these courses, does anything ever change? There's only one course out there in the entire world that doesn't identify itself as self-help, uh, but is self-discovery because the best influence in self-worth and self-discovery is no influence whatsoever. So what are all these teachers doing? All we're doing is following somebody else's alleged five steps to success and eight steps to success. And of course, on this uh, podcast, we don't have any of those people. We have people on this podcast that have done it, not who said, gee, I think I can write a business book, or I, can, I think I can write a book about relationships. I'm talking about people that have actually done it. And today's guests, uh, like several that we've had on here, uh, have all that I look for in a relationship and a little bit more uh, personally. So first thing we always do is, is of course, to start with aloha. Uh, when I first moved to Kauai in 2010, which is I'm celebrating 10 years here now, um, I'll celebrate anything I can on Hawaii, any reason to get out and take a ride. But um, fundamentally, uh, you know, living inside, living inside the dream is a critical thing. And it always follows the same pattern. People that, that, that seem to be able to manifest what they like to manifest virtually effortlessly. Are there speed bumps or setbacks along the way? Well, of course there are for everybody. However, the attitude that they have makes them or impels them towards the obstacles, not away from them. Winners are impelled towards challenges. They greet them with enthusiasm because they know that's where other people quit. And fundamentally, uh, ending the self-help hustle and heartache is giving you actual applicable steps from people who are winning at what they profess to have some expertise in now. Now, I can tell you that these two people don't profess to have expertise. They actually do. I've had it on a personal level. So we'll start with Bethany. You know, Bethany is a 500, Fortune 500 uh, strategist, and she's a branding expert. And the list of companies, these Fortune 500 companies that she's in demand with, is preposterous. I mean, we'd have probably 40 minutes of credentials here. I'm going to skip that and get on to something personally. I was just a neophyte in um, uh, social media and started to retweet some of Bethany's stuff and then found out she wrote a book about the Kalalau Trail. And so she, she's here. She's this big shot influencer and everything. And she was kind enough to retweet a few of my things. 
and the, and this little friendship struck up. And then I invited her to Hawaii. And what impressed me about her yes was I hadn't even finished the question. And she said, yeah, I'll come over and speak. Can I bring somebody with me and all that? And I got to meet Vince, who went through a massive career change. Um, and while most people that go through massive career changes, they don't feel seamless. Uh, his was pretty seamless. The only time um, seamlessness is not involved is when we're not listening to the voice inside. When we're following the voice inside, it seems to work out pretty well. So uh, this is a woman that's written uh, seven books, and um, they've come together, including she wrote a book called The, the Three Day Ra Three Days to a Raise or a Three Day Raise. And I got to tell you something, some of our uh, members have got that book and they got a raise. So <laughs> it's a good time. How, how do you get a raise in, in these times? You know, you might, you might want to read from an expert who comes from a corporate point of view, how to make that happen for yourself. A little more moolah is always good, but it pales in comparison to what I like to call the masterpiece work, uh, which ties into aloha. So what's aloha actually mean? Well, alo, uh, and I didn't know this. When I first moved here, I thought aloha was hello. And then I'd notice when people were leaving, they'd say aloha, and not necessarily to me, uh, but the locals. And uh, alo means divine and ha is uh, breath. So when someone gives you aloha, they're putting the breath of the divine on you. And that was the big connection. So I meet Vince, and by the way, you'll definitely want to get in touch with them at truthandlovejourney.com. Uh, Vince is also uh, extremely adept financially and um, helped both Davine and myself um, you know, and we had a fairly decent business education. We're totally lost with the small business loans and applying for the PPP and all that stuff. So get in touch with Vince if you're overwhelmed by that. Uh, there may be some money there. He'll tell you the truth about it. And um, uh, he's all about paying it forward, uh, doing the right thing. And then maybe at some point, if you need his services, you'll at least consider him. And I like people that do business that way. Uh, he wants to do something for you to 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 meet you. So the book they have out now is uh, Truth and Love. And so please welcome my guests, Vince and Bethany. How are you guys doing today? Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for inviting us, Mark. Yeah. It's so good to see you. Yeah. Now you guys sort of live in two different places, right? Colorado and Texas. And uh, you were giving me a little bit of an update. You got great medical facilities around the Dallas area, and uh, there's a lot of masking going on there, but a lot more going on in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yes. did you notice the CDC just came out yesterday and said they really believe that the contact is how we spread it, and that mm -hmm. it doesn't really stay on surfaces like they previously thought. So right. that would be huge difference if if the masks are really keeping it away that will help us open up the country faster so i was pretty excited to read that so right right well for those of you that are dropping in on the call right now we have the uh an amazing couple they've touched my life personally and by the way um vince's vince wrote a, another book these guys like to write books huh and they're manageable you know what I mean? You don't need a forklift to pick them up. <laughs> That's because they're just going to give you the steps about what they do. They don't have to fill it with theory. These are the things that work. So I have a very good friend of mine, uh, a European, I like to call him, who um, met uh, Vince over here in uh, Kauai when, the, when they were invited to speak. And by the way, uh, we've run live events here for nine years and they're the only speakers we've ever had in there. So that, that should tell you something. But basically, uh, sorry, them and Andrea Walsh. So he wrote this book, my friend was struggling, called The Child of a King, and then took the time to work with my friend who's resurrected his, in, his entire life and is now living uh, the life of his dreams and living to his full potential. And when someone, and when someone that you care about is struggling and someone that you meet helps them, well, 
you're 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 kind of you're kind of sucked right in there, aren't you? To <laughs> <our thing. laughs> you know, this is good. So it's been a it's been a bromance between me and Vince, which is really nice. Because a lot of times when you I think when you meet people. Uh, you meet the woman or you meet the man, and that ends up being the primary relationship. But the, there's two really beneficial and separate relationships, which is great between us. It's really the third relationship and why we wanted them on here today. Uh, this virus, Vince and I uh, shared a little bit in the beginning that this is, maybe we could look at this as a blessing. And mm -hmm. so as someone that's been in network marketing, one of the reasons that people join network marketing businesses it's always two things. They want more money and they want more time with the people that they care about. And here we are with this incredible blessing. I don't know anybody in 30 years of talking to people that were considering network marketing that didn't say they wanted more time with their family. Mm -hmm. So Vince, Bethany, now they have it. <laughs> They're not taking advantage of it. And it seems in a lot of homes, the best they can do is not kill each other. What, what's, what's going on? Why, why, are we, why are we missing this blessing? You know, you guys are the experts. So how so, do people find that truth? And it's, you are so right, Mark. Oh, my goodness. Our phones and our Facebook and everything is blown up with people that are like, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so what we found, Mark, is that most people, while they say they want more time with their families and, and the friends and to do things that they want to do. And the, the interesting thing is we've seen in Rockwall before I mean, we're crazy. We'll throw on a backpack through, uh, you know, our local town. People think we're homeless, but we're doing it just for exercise out walking. We don't see anyone. We just see people driving by. We've seen families out walking. It's like we've gone back to the 60s. We have. Um, We've seen families doing stuff together, families riding bikes together. I mean, all these families still lived here before COVID. So I think that they are getting more family time, but they also have more stress. Several of the spouses have lost their job. They've been laid off. There are, there's a different, um, you can't take a break. They have cabin fever. There's fear of the unknown. There's fear of the unknown and their focus is on the fear and what they're losing. Mm -hmm. And so what we find is relationships really pivot around where are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. And if your thoughts are on the negative, then you experience a negative experience. And, and it's interesting, Mark, with the thought of fear being the root of, of our responses, um, oftentimes, if, if we're not in that positive mindset, like Bethany's saying, it, you'll see people get quiet, it will be a flight issue or you'll see them fight and, and they'll get loud um, and, and not knowing how do you, how do you find peace in the midst of that? How do you learn how to uh, honor your spouse to, um, as you said, aloha, to see the value in them, that, that creator given value that we all have. And we totally miss that because we're focused on the wrong thing. Like Bethany said. Yeah. Yeah. And what we find is, is what we're trying to get people to focus on is really living in the moment and changing your mental attitude to, to focus on the gratitude and the time that you have before you. And I've told a lot of people as I've tried to redirect their thinking, this is probably the only time in your entire life that you will have this much time with that person. Right. It has never happened before. Even the people at homeschool say they're spending more time. Yeah, homeschooled before this, they're spending more time with their kids. Mm -hmm. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And we spend a lot of time with people helping them vision cast, you know, what do you want to do when you retire? Where do you want to go on vacation? And all of that. Well, we're trying to help people COVID cast. Like <laughs> what? What do you want to do during this time that you've never been able to do? Like you mentioned, Mark, make a photo album or paint a wall or do a mural or. And so without that dreaming phase, without sitting down as a family or with your significant other and saying, hey, honey, what have you always wanted? Like a Netflix all day movie day on Saturday or something right, right, right. like what can we do like a 
<laughs> we've been teasing because we've been having like pajama days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The whole family, we're in pajamas all day long. <laughs> Is that wrong? Is that yeah. wrong? <laughs> They'd be Hawaiian shirts. Yeah. It's a really great thing. So, um, you know, one of the things that you hit on is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, I was an English major and I don't think that anybody will argue the case that the saddest um, person in all of literature was the young man of many possessions who turned down eternal life. And I think a lot of people think it was the stuff he was addicted to. Uh, I've come to understand for myself, and I know that you're, you know, you spent a lot of time um, in the ministry events, mm -hmm. is that is that it was it was the possessions possessed him. It was the idea that they gave him power, and to give up his power or his status or whatever it is is something that he just couldn't do. Saddest creature in all of literature. Um, so I'm thinking. You know, what's the parallel here, if any, or am I totally all wet on this thing, is that people are worried about, am I going to have a job when I go back? Are they going to lay people off? I mean, I was in the restaurant business for 25 years, and I'm telling you right now, if more than 50% of them come back, I'll be shocked. And it's going to be a completely different world. A lot of takeout, a lot of to go in the beginning. And I can tell you right now, restaurants cannot survive on 25%. The other thing is most restaurants can't survive without alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so if it's mostly to-go stuff, um, it did, of course, it's depend on the state, but I am not seeing them being able to sell drinks to-go. And so you're talking about even just two drinks as a $50 bill today, two drinks for, you know, a couple. So, you know, why are people missing this opportunity thing you know, is does that story hold value for us here to help them crack through? You know, you're 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 you have a lot more expertise with with those types of metaphors. I'm you know I'm the Sunday guy that thinks about them a little bit. You're the guy that thought about them seven days a week. The stories is that um uh is that the root of the fear that people are fearful that they're going to lose lose the life that they had. So, in terms of economic stability and uh, privilege? So I would propose, Mark, that maybe we've seen it the wrong way prior to COVID, meaning it was almost for for the person who was interested in, in the possessions and getting their worth from that, perhaps they were totally missing the fact that they already had worth and value, meaning rather than look for the truth, look for the opportunities, they were living in illusion and and tight like 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 to say tight fisted living where where as opposed to being open and looking for opportunities, um, it's about my control and me trying to to find my value, make my value happen, or whatever it is I want to have happen. And where I think that really is rooted is in in our book, the Truth and Love Journey. Um, it's exactly that. What we find is that to move out of illusion will move out of my own control and into truth, it really starts with there's a fear that's keeping me stuck. It, there's, there's a resistance that's causing me to be stuck and miss the value of the relationships around me, miss the interactions around me. And so how do you move out of the fear so you can let go of that and move out of the illusion and the truth? And what we found is that you have to learn how to receive love. You have to learn how to um, be loved by others. You have to learn how to value yourself in a healthy way. I think it goes back to exactly what you said, aloha, the, the, this breath of, of the creator being breathed into you. Same word as namaste, that I see the value in you. I value the creator's light in you. And I think honestly, Mark, a lot of us don't know how to do that for ourselves. And not only see our value, but then allow others to feed into us. Mm -hmm. So by not taking input from the ones that know us well, we're missing the opportunities. And I'm sure there's a lot of spouses out there telling their spouses, this is when you should take that course. This is when you should get your real estate license. This is when you should sell that 
that stuff or like they're and they're, and you're they're not receiving it mm -hmm. they're expelling these ideas because it's change and it's uncomfortable and so they're not listening to the people that are placed in their lives with these great ideas because every market has winners and losers and even in covid times i think we have to look at what are unique opportunities that afforded to me right now that I have never had before? Like, can I take a course? Can I do something? Can I paint a picture? Can I sell those things on, on Etsy that I've always wanted to? Like, we're not really looking at it as a planning opportunity to transform. We're, mm -hmm. we're in fear. When you're in fear, you're constricted. Mm -hmm. You're stuck. Your yeah. model is around loss and scarcity and what you're not going to have when you're dreaming and you're living outside of illusion, you're living in truth and you're receiving, um, then you can see opportunity and potential and, and it's just a total different mindset that change. So you have, and, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I would say that the secret to, and we can talk about it in a little bit is how do you, remove the resistance that keeps you stuck in fear. And it's learning how to be receptive. It's learning how to receive, receive receptivity is the opposite of, of my own control of uh, trying to hunker down and, and make things happen. Cause again, that's when I'm not receiving. Mm -hmm. So receptivity is what can move you out of fear into love, into receiving from other people that love you and care about you that open your ideas to new possibilities. Uh, Mark, you naturally do that. Mm -hmm. And and I have been so incredibly grateful. I mean, that's something I want to receive all day long yeah. and, and learn from you. Yeah, thank you, you. When you. When you make, uh, uh, you can see things. And when you propose those to people uh, that would transform their lives, have you noticed when they reject it immediately, even though it would be so much better for them? Yeah, right. Every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't. I came came out of the womb, and the doctor said, "No, wrong one." <laughs> Rejection started right away. But anyway, it's like you can't stop me. <laughs> I'm here. But anyway, um, so you know, you're talking about uh, not listening. I want to come back to this thing um, about the the um, man of many possessions because mm -hmm. I think that for someone like you and I that have made a study of this type of stuff from completely different angles, com completely different backgrounds, completely different perceptions, we do see this as the saddest creature in all of literature. And I see mm -hmm. a lot of sadness, uh, you know, when thing things are not going to go back to normal. All you got to do is look at the restaurant business. They are not going to go back to normal. It's going to be different. Who's to say it's not going to be better? Mm -hmm. And who and who really wants to answer this question honestly about things going back to the way that they were? Did you like it that much anyway? Did you like the two-hour commute from you know, which is a seventeen-minute ride from Braintree to Boston that takes mm -hmm. two hours both ways every day? Did you really like it that much so that you could keep up the payments on a house in a neighborhood that you know you can't stand any of the neighbors? I mean, what do you what are you fighting? You know, there's. That's a different form of resistance, right? And I believe that it's just conditioning uh, of the machine. You know, the government, you know, the, the big, uh, the manufacturing, the government and the banking industry, uh, they're pretty, um, I'm going to be nice today. They're, they're, they're pretty manipulative uh, to their own benefit only. And um, I think that, um, you know, Carl Jung said, um, Thinking at first is difficult, so most people don't do it. They judge instead. And do you find, you know, both as a couple's um, expert, or you have expertise there. You've helped people, period, a ridiculous percentage of people. Um, do you think that um, when, when people are in judgment, is that a telltale of fear? Oh, Yeah. That they and, need validation that Vince thinks the same way that I do, so I so must have value, right? I, Which is I false. Think the value issue is the fundamental need of the human soul that drives us, depending on how we approach that, 
determines how successful we are in relationships and relationships it affects business. It affects everything, our family, it affects friendships. And, and again, going back to the story of, of the man who was really about possessions, it was the possessions were more about trying to make himself more valuable in his own eyes. When he totally missed the fact that he was already valuable. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, he was already valuable. Then because he's missing that, what else could he be missing? What other opportunities could he be missing? Because maybe he's never allowed himself to be this magnificent person he already was to begin with. Mm -hmm. And he's never allowed himself to dream the dreams that really he, he is capable of that are he thinks are impossible. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about his own value and his own worth. I mean, it goes back to, you know, the friend you were sharing who, uh, who you know, I, I think I, I love that brother. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I think one of the, the chapters that we talked about in my book, Child of the King, that he really related to was the, the story of the elephant. Um, that how an elephant is trained from a, from a child is, or a little baby elephant, is there's a chain that's put around its leg so that it can't move that's, that's um, staked in the ground. And as the elephant gets bigger, it believes it can't break free. Because he tries to break free when he's young and he can't do it and he can't do it. So then when he's a ginormous elephant, then they just put a little bitty rope around its leg with a little peg. It could break that rope so fast, but it believes it cannot break free. So and, it does. And so I think that it, that we're just like the elephant in that we have this incredible strength that's hard to even put inside of us. We don't believe it. And so we stay stuck. And so we try to find the value the, the uh, every way possible, but just receiving it, just being just believing and we believe that that the all relationship struggles really begin with the journey of the inward soul meaning if you don't know who you are what your dreams are what you're passionate about and then you don't know what the resistances are in your life what you struggle with childhood wounds past relational wounds um, that when you're in a business relationship or a marriage and someone says something that hits that past pain, you react. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a fight or flight mode. You either shut down and shut down the relationship or you fight and tear them up. Mm -hmm. And, and um, what we found is if you can get in touch of, with just receiving your value. And figuring out who you are, then you can love someone and receive love in exchange. So a lot of the relationships, a lot of you that are trapped in your house and you're angry with your spouse, or you're angry with your partner. It, a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that they may have said something that hit a wound or hit your fear or hit something that you used to hear your mom say to your dad or that your ex-husband used to say, and you literally are reacting out of like someone pouring salt in a wound. You're not even reacting to the person you're in the house with. It might just be because you're angry because you haven't had your hair cut in a long, long time, or you might be angry about something totally different. And until you learn yourself and understand where those landmines are, then people, you just keep volcanoing and erupting as things happen in your life. Right. right. And I was just going to say, so it could be externally, right? Mm -hmm. Aggressive mm -hmm. or voice raising or, you know, slamming doors or whatever, or completely withdrawing, okay. yeah. you know, going in, going into what I like to call the cave. You know, and this I go in, I go into the cave, and then I want to know why no one, no one's watching me. You know? This cave, this cave, <laughs> nobody has can win. Out, has brought out a lot of fears in people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, as they're reading articles, people tell me they're crying when they're reading Facebook. It literally has brought out. So imagine someone that maybe lost a 
a father or a mother when they were younger, or imagine someone who has lost a spouse and who is now in a different relationship. Um, these COVID fears are actually invoking people's worst fears if they allow it. So they literally can relive what it felt like to lose mom or lose dad, or and they're they're reading through the social media, watching the news, and they're literally invoking pain on themselves continually mm -hmm. and then going into these relationship discussions while they're in that sore hurt place um, so i'm telling people turn off the news mm -hmm. shut down your facebook quit putting that negative stuff out there watch something positive listen to some amazing music listen to mark and recycle what's in your brain so that you can bring that energy to life that you've been gifted with okay. so this um yeah, I think the I think one of the big questions gets gets down to, um, you know, you're talking about fear, okay, and to be coming from that state of mind, obviously, um, shuts off the channel, right? I like to call it the channel, the source of all good. There's a source of all good, which you know somebody may call God or whatever. It's all good. We'll let them figure it out. But anyway. So I'm a channel. We're all channels of that source, right? And if I'm in fear or I'm angry, I'm really shutting off uh, that flow of divine ideas, yeah. okay? And obviously, uh, any change that's permanent, any change particularly that's permanent and positive, you know, is going to be spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm. And as long as I'm in fear... I can never get into that third level, which is physical, mental, and then into the spiritual realm, heal in the spiritual realm and let it spill back into both the mental and physical part of my life, right? Um, agree, disagree. So if you agree, how does Harriet, who's worried about her kids, right? Um, they're going to miss out on some things. Maybe one of them, it's their senior year. And all those things like prom and senior day and all that, they don't get. A kid's worked for 10 years to get a shot at the NFL, and he doesn't get it because they're not having tryouts. You know, there's some, um, there's can appear to be disappointments. Mm -hmm. But not every storm comes into our life to destroy us. Some is just to help us change direction. Mm -hmm. So let's get down to what we do on this show, which is what steps... Can a, a couple assesses and says, you know what, Bethany's right or Vince is right. Uh, you know, we we do have this. I mean, I think Bethany's words, the most important words that have been said so far, are she's imploring you to understand this is the chance of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. This is a chance of a lifetime because let me tell you something. They're down. They're down in the basement printing money, and what that means is they're selling the future. To get through the present, and sometimes people have you have to do that. It's just the way it is. You got to go through your rainy day account. Well, they can go through more than that. They can actually go into the Federal Reserve, which is not a federal branch of the government. Ask them to print money. Why they have to ask them? I don't know. They'll print the money, and then we borrow it from the Federal Reserve. And if you don't think that that's a mess, look at Griffin's. Um, the Creature of Jekyll Island on YouTube. It'll blow your mind how the money system actually works. But be that as it may, the, your dollar about a year from now is going to be worth about two-thirds of what it is right now because they're going to print, they're going to put more money in circulation, which is going to lower the value of the dollar. And you and I are going to have to go back to work more hours just to cover. Mm hmm and Which is go, why we're doing a book on relationships. Because <laughs> if you have less money in your pocket, but you have the best relationships you've ever had, then the money won't matter. Then the money won't matter. So how does Harriet and Fred, okay, who take an honest look and say, you know, what if Bethany's right? Just go with Bethany for a second. What if she's right? And this, inside this tragedy, is the 
moment of a lifetime for you or a string of moments of a lifetime, which will give us all a rich memory bank moving back into probably having to work a little harder, a little longer just to make ends meet. Um, how do they make that shift? So they're not coming from severe. So Harriet and, her, and Harold, they have a conversation. They say, you know what? We're not appreciating each other. We're not taking advantage of this. Maybe, maybe she's right and we're coming from fear and it's blocking the realm of divine intervention and ideas and grace and joy and peace and love. What steps do you have for that couple that can get honest and say, you know what, we're tolerating each other. I'm walking around thinking I'm a good guy because I'm tolerating that moron, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, you know, or is he ever going to pick his socks up, you know? No, I'm not. <laughs> but anyway, um, what, what are one or two steps that people can, can take if they can at least lean into it and own the fact that this is what we've always said we wanted, now it's here and we're not doing anything except not killing each other? Seems like such a waste. I've come up with two, and we'll see how many Vince comes up with. One is the frustration that we experience in relationships is if I think I can control him, uh -huh. Uh -huh. then I get frustrated. Uh -huh. And so one of the things we tell people all the time is, is the way that I can impact him is I can show up and be a better person. I can in take my power back. And what we hear is when people say things like, you made me mad, you, oh, you really, you've really done it now, or, <laughs> or, or you are ruining my day. I, I tell people, take your power back. No one can ruin your day. Mm -hmm. No one can make you yell. And no one can do, you're, you own that. You might not like what they did, but you still own how you react. So the biggest transformation, and this is so hard to hear sometimes, is if I can talk gently, mm -hmm. if I can control my reaction, mm -hmm. then he actually will change the way he reacts. So if he comes in <laughs> yelling at me, I can't imagine him ever yelling, but if he came in yelling at me and I just said, honey, is there something bothering you? Like, did you have a bad day? I can control how I act. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a, a jukebox where you see the ball popping around. Yeah, yeah. Literally, like if it pops off of him, but it doesn't hit my bell and go ding, 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 then it's going to stop going around the jukebox. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's number one. I say, if you can focus on what you say and how you say it and take your power back, no one can make you mad. No one can ruin your day. No one can ruin your life unless you let them. And then the second thing is we say celebrate everything. Mm -hmm. And you can celebrate at home. I have this lady I work with. She just did a, a uh, virtual trip to Disney World with her four-year-old. And she took him to every room of the house and decorated it as a different Disney World room or whatever. Nice. <laughs> left the house but took a week off she's a high level executive took a week off and spent the week and she said it was fun as could be they'd even go get in the car and drive like they were going somewhere he's four and then come home and go to a different room <laughs> and literally right. created a vacation experience so in celebrating everything get dressed up have a dinner date at home go out in the backyard put a table out there start a fire, have a fire pit, do whatever you can to celebrate this moment. Um, right. Because I've lost, I've had two people I've been married to die. Um, and I could say that what people sell, what people miss when they lose someone is they miss the every day. They don't miss the vacations. They miss the pancakes in the morning, the conversation. Right. They right. miss hand holding so that's what i'm saying my number two would be hold their hand mm -hmm. touch them often and frequently <laughs> right 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 exactly exactly so um so part of this it sounds like you want to come from a plan i'm going to create a plan uh where there's full engagement from the people involved right yep so Put these things away. Put these things away. That's definitely, the other thing. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, it's really nice. You know, Dave and I, you know, we run our, our business is 100% online and it's easy for it to be a monster. In a, in a good, you know, it's a good monster, but it's still, um, you know, where did Tuesday and Wednesday go, man? You know, I haven't seen my wife and I live seven feet from her, you know. And, um, but basically, um, the idea, uh, like there's this woman uh, over on Oahu and she did this a couple of three years ago. And um, her goal was to take this cruise in Italy and Greece and France and it ended in Barcelona. And so what she did was once a week, she'd have a dinner that was Greek or Italian or whatever. And so they planned on doing that. And so they've resurrected that activity. And, you know, so his job is to bring, he likes history. So he brings historical. So he talks about the history of the country or some, you know, gets down a little deeper. She cooks the food and they celebrate Greece or whatever as a place where they're going to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, so you're talking about those types of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I would say, Mark, uh, everything that Bethany said, if it's an Oreo, sh she's the filling. That's the fun part. Um, to me, there's two other parts, and that is there's the draining part of as you do the things that she's saying, you can actually get to a place of dreaming with your spouse, with your significant other um, of, of who are you? What are your dreams? What matters to you? Um, what opportunities are we missing? So that that actually comes from being in a safe place feeling loved valued affirmed you matter um so a lot of times it's it's not only about our significant other expressing those things to us it really begins with what we call the inward journey for singles we say if you want to find the one you have to be the one and, and being the one really starts again with the inward journey. So if you want to make everything that Bethany talked about permanent, it really goes back to the word you said, aloha. It's what does it mean for me to carry this incredible value of my creator that, that when Bethany sees me, again, the, the word when we were hiking in the Himalayas and when people would say the word namaste, well, I'd heard that word before. Um, and in yoga classes, not that I took yoga, but, but, you know, I was familiar with it, but it was different when we were in Nepal because when they would say it, they would look straight into your eyes and almost bow to you. Hmm. And it was this incredible Americans don't do this. I think we totally miss it because we might say the word, but we miss that. It's not just this peace word. It is Mark. I see God's light in you. Mm -hmm. I see that you are as valuable as the creator mm -hmm. and I honor that. Right. And, and I think that's partially halfway there. The other halfway to get there to make this permanent is by saying and coming to the place where I embrace that I am valuable mm -hmm. because when you can do that, you can learn how to be at peace. And when you're at peace, you can do everything that Bethany said, even if your spouse ticks you off, you can step back. And you can go, you know what? She probably, something's going on. Let me, at, rather than react to her, let me ask right. her what's going on. Right. And, and it creates this incredible safety that as we're honest with our own selves about what are our triggers, um, what are the things that we struggle with? And, and then we work through those. And we show grace, love. Again, what we found is the sweet spot of relationships where intimacy really happens is between truth and love. If we can be at peace with who we are and we can be honest with our issues, um, both with ourselves, with our creator and with those with us, then that's the sweet spot where you, it's possible to be fully known, know the other completely and still be embraced faults and all. Which is the definition of intimacy. I love that. Know the other person completely, know all their weaknesses, all their faults, all the terrible things they do, and yet still fully embrace them. That's right. the definition of intimacy. And when you experience that, you can see opportunities and dream in ways that you never could before. 
right. that are incredible. And I think that's where, you know, Mark, and one of the things that I think about when I see families walking around Rockwall here in Texas is these families are doing relationships together like they've never done before, almost their entire generation. And, you know, I, I kind of wonder in the back of my mind, could a family business be created? Mm -hmm. We've gotten so far away from family businesses. Right. That was the thing in the past. Maybe it would happen again. Maybe that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, we see the value of great business opportunities in this COVID environment all linked to relationships. Right. Right. So Harriet and Harold have been married for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And Harriet's listening to you. And what's going on in her head is she saying, I'm going to sit down with Harold and I'm going to say yada, 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 and he's going to do what he always does. Mm -hmm. So she never takes that action that, that you're suggesting because she's sure that he's going to be defensive about it. Mm -hmm. Right? She's already made up her mind. She's already played out. I mean, we project negatively with precision, with NASA type of precision. Right? Mm -hmm. We imagine positively incredibly fuzzy, which is why most dreams don't come true is because the subconscious mind doesn't work on fuzzy. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, we need to be maybe fuzzy in a bad day about some negative stuff, but it's too boring to spend time there. So I'm going back to the trip I'm taking with Vince or the hike I'm taking with Klaus or whatever, you know, fundamentally, um, these, Longer term relationships, right? Um, where one of the two is listening to you, they want it, but the history of the relationship is interrupting him or her from taking that critical first step. What happens in those situations? Because that is going to happen. How does We'll say her. We'll say he's the you know he's the one that's always defensive, right? Mm -hmm. Alpha personality, got to be right about everything, right? Um, so, so how, she's been, how does she press? Well, how does she press to the goal that you're talking about? Years, she's going to know exactly what he's been asking her to do for 13 years that she has never wanted to do. So she knows exactly what she could do to get him uh, to listen. <laughs> I can tell you, I've talked to women where they're like, he's been asking me to wear this nightie for 15 years. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think it is our selfishness or our desire to only please ourselves mm -hmm. that has us so focused on what we want and we need Mm -hmm. um, I could list, I've, I've known Vince so many years. I know exactly if he got whatever he wanted, I know exactly what he wants. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's really a matter of giving. You always talk about giving without right. expecting reciprocity. Yeah. That is what she's, she has to do. And I think what will be amazing, I call it what if upping is she's thinking, well, what if it doesn't do anything? She, we automatically assume the worst. What if, what if he doesn't change? What if it doesn't matter what I do? What if I say, what if up? What if he's so overwhelmed by one small act she does that he walks up and gives her this giant kiss that she's been dreaming of for five years? Or what if he reacts so amazingly that they have the best five days in a row that they've ever had? Right. What if it transforms their relationship? So we just need to get people to what if up right. and stop selfishly focusing on the things we know we don't want to do. Right. And Marcus, so we, we had a couple uh, that we were coaching recently and, and they were both not flight people. They were both fight people. Mm -hmm. And so they had been married 10 years, so almost the 13. Mm -hmm. um, and they knew how to push each other's buttons and they liked pushing each other's buttons. Because, well, well, partly they'd hurt each other yeah. in the past. And so they would purposefully like want to get the other person back. Right. Right. So, so what we found, how you break that cycle, how you do the one, the, the what if up is think opposites. 
if you can actually find the courage to do the opposite of what you feel towards that person, you will actually start to create a situation that de-escalates arguments, that, that de-escalates tension. And we patterned this for them and they were shocked that it worked. So for instance, you have a little verbal spat. You're immediate you immediately want to pull back. You want to go in the other room. You want to ignore them. You want to give them the silent treatment. So we taught them after these spats to pull into the other person, to hug, to touch, to talk gently. And they said, this will never work. We'll just end up in a fight. You know what? It did work. <laughs> right. I think, can you imagine this guy's just, he's been trying to figure out why his wife reacts this way. And all of a sudden, He's been wanting her attention and then all of a sudden she's like giving him the attention that he wants and he can't be mad at her yeah. And yeah. the funny thing was they said their tip back to us was, we think you should tell people to fight naked. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't tried that one yet, but I kind of like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's in um, um, part two, right? The sequel. The sequel. <laughs> the sequel, <laughs> living living in Nirvana. Part two, fight naked. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> living in Nirvana. Yeah, in Nirvana, fighting naked. <laughs> um, so he, here's what I'm thinking, right? And help me understand this, or correct me, or you know, refine it, or whatever. But when people really commit, because we're talking about the. Uh, upper edge of the pyramid here in relationships right um when they when they really commit what they one of the things that they're committing to is the relationship mm -hmm. and submerging some of self now the tricky part is the world um you know and this has gone on you can go back every 30 to 50 years and see a change in the world, like in the early 1900s, the tallest church, the tallest buildings in town were the churches. And if Vince didn't go to church on Sunday, where's Vince? He's not feeling well. He's never feeling well on Sunday. He's going to hell. There was that social pressure to go to church. And then WW2 broke out and the escalation of the factories. So the factories became the biggest in town. And that's what we worship. That became our God. You want to know what the God is, just look at the biggest symbol in town. And now it's these financial institutions, right? That's that's what we worship, right? Is is uh, you know these false values that pass, you know, and and this happens all the time. So the individual, according to Joseph Campbell in the Hero's Journey, and I agree with him. That doesn't mean it's right or you should, but he he seems to feel that the individual's individuality has always been vulnerable to the machine and of course the machine has always felt uh, vulnerable to the individual they want us to behave and what you're suggesting is that they reassess their own values right not what the world says is important or even the guy sunday morning in church take all the information but decide for yourself you know what's important and live that so you have this relationship so i want to be in Davine included in this relationship but i don't want a dog i've already had dogs i love dogs i don't want someone that's going to follow me around okay um i don't want to undermine her individuality okay but and when it's really important shit, man i want her to behave the way i need her to be to behave right so um, I have to come to this as an observer, not as myself, into this relationship, right? And respect the relationship over my personal uh, needs, which are longtime thought habits that haven't fulfilled me in the first place. Because even the times I fought for and got my way, um, there was no victory in it. There was no sense of joy in it. And there was certainly no security in it because I knew I had coerced, manipulated, or intimidated my way in to what I wanted. So let me let me review this. So here's this relationship, which I'm going to surrender to. Davine's going to surrender to the relationship, but not to make the relationship so powerful that we lose our individuality in there. I think Gilbron said 
uh, you know, drink the same wine, but not from the same glass, mm -hmm. right? Maintain our individuality. So in this, I'm fascinated by this what if up. Um, so Mary takes a shot. It doesn't work out. Um, how does she stop herself from scoring that and say, listen, I know Vince. It's going to take four or five times before he starts to buy in. Um, and, am I warm here? Do these things happen? What are your suggestions? That's why we've been mentoring some of these couples for months because <laughs> we're reminding them that it's about you being a better person, mm -hmm. you being the best you you can be. So I wouldn't conditionally stop being a good person because he doesn't react a certain way. And I don't know, only in relationships do we think this way because in business relationships, we, we keep trying to show up and be a good person at work, regardless mm -hmm. of the results, you know, regardless of the reaction we get, we know that that's who we want to be in a workplace setting. I don't understand in a personal setting why we're like, oh, sorry, you didn't earn the best Bethany today, but it's here to get the <laughs> shitty version of me. <laughs> so I'm I mailing it in. I think that it's just a lot of times we just feel rejected, right? Mm -hmm. When we put out this energy and they don't receive it, we feel rejected. And we just have to keep telling ourselves that we're training ourselves to be a better person, to be the best version of us. And it's not just about your mate. It's about your children and your parents. Mm -hmm. And if you learn this skill, you're going to have relationships all around you that aren't just with this person. Mm -hmm. So right. it's kind of like you're, you're raising to a higher reality. Right. So don't give up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, don't make up stories in your head about how they're going to behave. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't measure. Don't stop measure. measuring. Stop the measuring stick is what we call it. Yep. So expand on that a little bit. So again, it starts with the inward journey, but I think we've let uh, Vogue magazine determine how we should look. Uh, GQ for guys. Yeah. I think we've um, grown up um, thinking that we have to have a certain GPA, not to do well in life or in class, but but to um, that, that's that's a mark. Yeah, that, that we're the top of our class. And we've been compared sometimes to siblings or to other businesses or other people or and we, we grow up almost innately learning that everything's about measuring. And so what we do is we have gone from measuring ourselves and our value. It becomes a natural way we see the world around us. It becomes a worldview. And much like glasses, we put it put it on and we measure things by it. So we're start with ourselves. What are we going to do with others? We're going to measure them. We're going to measure How them. are they behaving? Are they worth me being nice mm -hmm. to or not? I mean, that's really what we're Have saying. Have they earned our attention or our love? It's, it's, it's a downward spiral, if you think about it, is our ability to love people without measuring them is what we've been, that's what our purpose on earth is. And it has transformed my relationship with my children. Is you're, We're really asking you to love someone because of how they were made, where they're at, even if they don't do what you want them to, even if they don't say what you want them to, we're asking you to learn to love them right where they're at. And, and Mark, just to clarify, because a lot of frustration we've gotten from, from people is, so that means I don't share what, how I feel. No, absolutely. You share how you feel. But just like we said earlier, I can't control Bethany. I can control myself. Mm -hmm. So because I value myself and, and I tell her, honey, when you did this, I felt this, I would like this. So I've not told her sh her behavior's bad. I've not told her she's, um, you know, she needs to straighten up. I've said, Honey, I value you enough to share what's going on inside of me. I'm letting you in. Um, I really would like that to continue and go deeper. And so I would like this. Now, after I've done that, I'm not measuring her. I'm not judging her. I'm not even expecting her to necessarily behave, behave one way or another. I'm saying, okay, now I release it. It is, my hand is open. It's not closed. I'm not trying yeah. to control it. And, and then that's where we see relational breakthroughs. 
Yeah, let's talk about the re giving and receiving thing because, you know, we built or I built my whole career and Davine uh, got on board right away uh, with the same philosophy. Emerson wrote an essay called uh, uh, The Law of Compensation and breaking it down into four words is give more, get more. And we see his writing through Hanel. We see it all through Wallace Waddles quoted Hanel. Uh, a little bit of quote and a lot of paraphrasing, and Hill, a lot of paraphrasing, uh, but basically the same thing. And that is, um, you know, giving um, is a tricky thing because I've noticed with a lot of people, because we've added on to that, and thanks for recognizing it, Bethany, is, you know, giving without expectation of reciprocity, particularly from that channel, because then it's not really giving. And one of the things that we found is a telltale in working with individuals, and of course you guys are working with couples, but I find that there's some people that fancy themselves as givers. And they, they are generous, but they can't receive. And I've tried to communicate to them, they're not giving at all. Mm -hmm. That's control. Mm -hmm. If you can't receive, then you're not, then you're keeping other people out of the flow. Affluence mm -hmm. comes from the word of flore, which means to flow too. Mm -hmm. And currencies have no value unless they're constantly being exchanged. Mm -hmm. So when you don't receive from other people and you think you're a good giver, you're stopping those people from being in the flow of giving and receiving. So this, you're talking about giving here, and this you've hit a real key point as far as I'm concerned, and that is they've got to come into this realizing they're making themselves a uh, higher consciousness, raising their own consciousness, raising their own relationship with God or, um, yep. you know, Buddha, the Christ, whatever, whatever. It's all good. You know, it's, it's pretty much everything, including a chair is a big reach for me. But anyway, but anyway. Um, You're in, right. In, it's not contingent on what they give back. You're choosing to love. Mm -hmm. You're choosing to give. Right. And you're choosing to do that because you've committed to that relationship. We, we're literally running into people constantly that are saying they're in a relationship, but they don't want to give to the relationship because right. they're angry or resentful or, you know. Yeah, it's always being measured as contingent. I mean, I know from 22 to 40-ish, um, every relationship I got involved in, the first thing I identified was the trap door, the way out. That's, that ain't going to get it done. You know, it's yeah. going to get me out, that's for sure. But anyway, um, no, it was all about, you know, what it was, it was, um, you know, it was just because I thought I was supposed to have a girlfriend, you know, and uh, I didn't know how to not do that. You know what I'm saying? And um, um, I think one of the things that happens for people, and, and then we'll come in for a landing here, but um, you kind of touched on this a little bit, is that I think in the work that I've done, what I've sadly seen for over 30 years, and Dave and I used to pass out those stick-on things, name tags, mm -hmm. at seminars we do for two, three, four hundred people, and tell them to put a number there, their worth. And the average was six. Six. And then we'd go through this whole thing and kind of explain to them what they had done is break down their roles as a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a network marketer, a salesman, you know, a baseball coach and all that. And they'd come up with an average of their role performance, which doesn't have anything to do with their identity. The way Mark sees the world, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, this would be probably another whole show for me and you, Vince. But um, I think the biggest lie that's ever been perpetrated on mankind is nobody's perfect. You know, we have these... I think when you're in those giving moments and your heart is pure, you that's 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 we're perfect imperfections, mm -hmm. and that um, the only reason that I have anything that some people may judge as an imperfection is to remind me that I need Bethany, I need Vince, I need Davine. We need each other, mm -hmm. and together we can make up the body of the Christ or whatever. We the seven sonship rights are in there, and um, so, do you find that that's a problem that people value themselves based on their role performance rather than 
the fact that they're a child of God, that they're royalty, that they're a king? I mean, why aren't people starting there? So let me give you one of, I believe, the most misquoted scriptures in the Bible. And that is, be perfect because your heavenly father is perfect. For years, I've heard that talked about is I need to be perfect. I need to do all the right things. Um, and then I'll be perfect like God is perfect, meaning then I have what I need. I have worth. I have value. The interesting thing is if you go back to the Hebrew and, and the Greek and understand what it's really saying, it's saying love perfectly the way God loves selflessly without judgment, without thinking we're less than. And, and so I, I think the fundamental need of the human soul, it really comes down to, do I have enough? Am I worthy enough? And do I have value? And if we believe that we don't have enough or that I'm not valuable, then that's when the world starts getting turned upside down. And mm -hmm. so I think, again, even thinking about it from, I call it the kingdom of, of how does God or the creator see things? It's a kingdom of opposites. It's opposite the way we see this world. And, and that is we get stuck because of the scarcity mindset because I don't have enough or I believe I'm not enough. And if we can change that, it will change everything. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, there's more than enough. The distribution system sucks and, uh, <laughs> you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. And where these guys are now, it's a word way past greed. That's not even in the dictionary yet. I mean, it's just, I, I have a theory that some of these clowns, the seven families running the federal reserve and all that, I think they think if they have all the money, they're too important to die. Guys, you're going to die. Deal with it. You're not that important. <laughs> anyway. Um, I like to say they have to wipe the same way I wipe. Exactly. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, when you touch that spot, and I've been there a few times, when you touch that spot uh, of loving perfectly, um, all that stuff just goes away. Mm -hmm. It just goes away, and there's a fulfillment and a peace. Um, it's almost like this incredible lightness of being. Um, but the motive has to be pure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That That's the tricky part. And, um, you know, get with Bethany. Get with Vince. Vince can help you with the SBA stuff if he's still... What a nightmare that is. What a yeoman job he's done of helping people there. But, um, you know, uh, this is a really, really, you know, important thing about showing up in the relationship as a better person. This is a huge takeaway for me. It doesn't matter what the other person does. This is right out of Wallace Waddle's book, The Science of Being Great, in his chapter on In the Home. You just be great in the home. It doesn't matter if she's not picking up her underwear Pick up yours, and hey, you might want to pick hers up too, and not and not score it. Try that. Try not <laughs> scoring it. Try look at try looking at it as you're paying back an 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 unpayable back debt to the universe. I mean, we're on the Goldilocks planet. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. This it, if if it was just this much or this much this way, there'd be no life here. It's the Goldilocks planet. I think it's four billion to one the odds of being born. Okay. Mm -hmm. From grandparents meeting to their grandparents meeting to their grandparents. It's like four billion to one on the Goldilocks planet. My goodness, I think he's gonna say, Did, did you like it? Wasn't it cool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The wins, the losses, the heartaches, the victories, the defeat, the feelings, man, you know. So um I think this is a, a big takeaway for me is, um, you know, is Vince encouraging you that if you start to show up in the relationship as a better person without mm -hmm. expectation for trying to do the opposite mm -hmm. when he or she yells at you or yells and you've interpreted it as them yelling at you or as they might just be upset about the plumbing, who knows, right? And to celebrate, yeah, the plumbing's not working, ain't it great? Somebody's going to fix it. You know, we don't have to, you know, 
and that this opens up um, uh, the dream chamber. This opens up that opportunity to step into the field of infinite possibilities. Because if you have love, what Hanel writes about is that anytime purpose, so now this dream is maybe a life purpose, but Hanel writes about, Einstein wrote about the same thing, that anytime purpose is injected with love, genius is born, wow. which, which eliminates the possibility of you saying to yourself, well, I'd like to do this, but I'm probably not smart enough. Because if it's a good purpose that's going to serve other people, and you inject it with love, and I'm, what I'm catching a lot from Bethany, and I'd like to know what your thoughts are, Bethany, and if I can detach from instant gratification for this minor behavior modification of four seconds and not expect the, the red seed apart for me. So is detachment an important part of this initially? Yeah, I think that, and what you'll find is the results a day later when they've thought about it and start to feel like a complete jerk for being mean to you when you are so amazing, the results will be 10 times what it would have been in that four second answer. Yeah, fantastic. Well, uh, so grateful that you guys were here. We're gonna kind of do the end of this a little bit different than we normally do because there's two of you. So we'll go, whoops, we'll go back and forth. So Vince, we'll give you the first two. Um, your favorite sound or word, Vince? Hmm. Well, it'd be words. And um, because it's what I try to be and see in others is I value you. Nice. I have talked to grown muscular um, Navy SEAL men when I can say, strength and honor you already have it i see your honor mm -hmm. and whether or not they feel honorable it's one of the most powerful things to experience with another person giving them honor, letting them see it right fantastic fantastic and vince your least favorite word or sound um can't can't yeah. Um, because for me, Mark, for <laughs> four decades of my life, I was stuck in can't. Right. And um, I am very passionate about letting people see their unlimited potential um, because I've experienced being limited. And right. uh, it's just that is the furthest thing from the truth. Fantastic. Uh, Bethany, what turns you on spiritually, creatively? Uh, spiritually or creatively or emotionally that's going to be easy it's nature it's getting outside <laughs> no, no kidding anywhere, anywhere where i where there's no people and there's just beautiful beautiful nature it can be any kind of nature although i do love Kauai. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well they were going to be over here for an event we're having they'll be speaking at a live event for us and uh that we're going to do online and uh, we'll also, I'm going to open it up for them for an hour of Q&A. So it'll be a lot of fun somewhere in there. We're, mm -hmm. we're not going to be precise. Um, emotionally, spiritually, or creatively, Bethany, what turns you off? I would say it would be judgment. I think that, um, um, and actually when Vince and I first met, I, I told him he couldn't date me because um, I have felt the judgment of people from some of my failures on the relationship side. And if, if you start, if you start with the measuring stick, I have a pretty, you know, a pretty dark <laughs> and unmeasured past. <laughs> so I would say that, if you're going to keep score, uh, I, it's it's pretty bad. I think what's amazing is I've been able to speak to people that feel like they're not judged because they've literally said things like, well, you've messed up so badly that I know I can tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're trying to be kind, but it kind of feels 
like sandpaper. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. Um, Vince, what profession, other than the one that you're currently engaged in, would you like to try? If you were to try another one. You know, I always had a dream of being a forest ranger um, because I'm a nature guy too. Uh, yeah. Just like Bethany is a nature person. And, um, you know, I think there's just something uh, to me, I feel closest with my creator in nature. Yeah. Uh, and I, always like this, I always like to say that I know God's on the Tobin Bridge in Boston. Yeah. But it's a lot easier for me to find them here on Kauai. <laughs> well, <laughs> call, me, if, call me a weak Christian, but it's just the way it is, you know. So if if I was in Kauai, actually, I would do the same thing that we do in Colorado. Is is on our retreat relationship retreats, whether it be for singles or uh, couples, um, we take them hiking. Mm -hmm. And to me, some of the best times when people get away from all the noise, um, you you start to see their wheels turning in their minds and they start seeing new possibilities. And um, that, that's why I love hiking and being out in nature. Yeah. Well, one of the beautiful things is um, uh, you know, that, that happened uh, when I met them is you could kind of sense that or feel that about them. Um, there was this authentic connection and uh, you know, that led to the book that they wrote eventually. I don't know that it was a thought in their mind when I first met them over here in Kauai. But uh, one of the things that we talked about was, um, you know, the size of the event we had here. We usually cap it around 30, 35 people. And, um, you know, we have a staff of uh, nine. And so there's a lot of personal attention and Davine and I in six days can get around. And um, it was interesting to see that the retreats that you're doing are not big cattle calls either of two or 300 people in a room. And let me tell you how to have a good marriage. Give me your 600 bucks. Have a nice day. But, um, you know, listen to my CDs and everything will be hunky dory. But anyway, um, which is what we're trying to prevent on this show. Use your head, folks. If you want change, you got to want it as bad as oxygen. And there's only really one thing that's going to drive that. And that's that's your commitment uh, to learning how to uh, love yourself. That's it. That's it. Because you can't give away what you don't have. And until you accept love, that you're loved anyway, you know, there's some parts of me, I don't like it, God. I know you don't like it. Thanks for loving me anyway. You know, how can I see that more often during the day? But uh, make sure you get with Bethany and um, Vince because they do very small retreats two to four people and really get under the covers um so to speak not, not, li <laughs> not, not literally they want you to get under the covers <laughs> the best undercover experience i've ever had exactly uh so um bethany best thing you ever ate best thing i ever ate um, hmm. I would say that for probably, so I was raised in Michigan and grew up on kind of venison and stuff. So definitely after going 20 years without having anything but chicken and venison and rabbit, um, the best thing seemed like steak. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's perspective, right? It's whatever yeah. you can't have when I'm in Colorado and we can't get to sushi, then the best thing is sushi. So it's almost like what you can't have is yeah. what is the best thing. That's the human experience. Vince, best thing you ever ate? Um, you know, I travel all around the world and so many countries are based on starch and things like that. Um, when I went to Brazil, I had the best salads ever. I'm not a salad person. But the freshness of the vegetables was mm -hmm. amazing. There you uh, go. I would say the, I mean, and the steak. Uh, who, who could argue with steak? But, but the, uh, yeah, the food was just amazing. Yeah, yeah. We've been a few places where there's no GMOs allowed in the country, mm -hmm. and just lettuce and tomato. It's like they're like explosion. They get like flavor in them. Wow. You know. Anyway, so last question. We'll ask both of you. We'll start with you, Bethany. Um, 
if God exists, what would you like to hear him or her say when you get to the pearly gates? Well done. Well done. You'll get that at least. And Vince, yourself? You know, it would be the same words, just not verbally expressed. It would just be a hug. Just a hug, yeah. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be something to realize that that's been happening all this time anyway? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Every 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 time, every mm -hmm. time, um, yeah. Every time somebody hugs me, what if it's really the grace of God? And I always like to say, you know, I, I was recovered by the grace of God. I didn't see a burning bush. I didn't see the Red Sea open, but I saw it through the grace of people, you know, mm -hmm. who gave to me uh, when I was pretty much a lost cause. So truthandlovejourney.com, truthandlovejourney.com. Uh, yep. Hey, share the broadcast. Share this with other people. Uh, we'll have a page up for you in a couple of weeks. We'll do a whole page with highlights and everything for you. But anyway... Uh, we hope this is helping you end the self-help hustle and heartache. They're certainly not expressing to you that this is easy, but they're expressing to you that it's a nirvana. It's a new consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's a better way to live and to feel good about yourself. And when you do something, you know, don't be so stuck on do they know what they're talking about that as soon as the words come out of your mouth, you expect your mate to hit a knee and say, oh, my God, thank you. How could you have put up for me for all these years? You know, <laughs> give it at least 24 hours and uh, get in touch with Bethany. Get in touch with Vince. Uh, you'll find them to be two of the more accommodating people uh, on the planet straight up until you get to know them. And then they'll really blow you away. Peace be the journey. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks, guys. Great job. Thanks, Mark. Mahalo for listening. The Taking Charge podcast is a place that you can count on to receive the truth. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, please make sure to leave a review and subscribe to our channel. The show notes and links to anything we discussed today can be found at the website, takingchargethepodcast.com. Be sure to reserve your spot for the Master Key experience. Early notification scholarships are limited. Mahalo and aloha.